Okay, let's see here. Hmm. So, uh, okay, go ahead, um, Brandon. Can you say please, Brandon? Okay, good. All right, let's see here. Hmm. Okay, Brendan, can you read please, Brendan? Homage and refuge. Namo Bodhaya, Namo Dhammaya, Namo Sangaya. Homage to the enlightened Buddha, perfect, perfect in wisdom and compassion. Homage to the noble Dhamma, the universal law the Buddha taught. Homage to the holy Sangha, the protectors of the noble Dhamma. To this triple gem, I go for refuge. May the triple gem bless and protect me and my loved ones tonight. May we be free from harm and danger. May we overcome our difficulty. May we always meet with success. May we be blessed with good health, strength, peace, and happiness. Okay, Megan, please. May my parents, brothers, and sisters, teachers, friends, and relatives be well and happy. May they be free from harm and danger. If they are faced with harm and danger, I wish that they overcome their anxieties quickly. If they are faced with ill health, I wish that they regain good health soon. May the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha bless and protect them. Protect me and my loved ones tonight. I'll bless my Keep us away from harm and danger. Let our sleep be peaceful so that we awake in the morning refreshed and body and mind. Hey, Johnson, please. Um, if I have strayed from the truth path, may I never do so again. If I have seriously hurt someone today, if I were to deed, may I be more mindful the next time. Oh, Buddha, Dean, like one, help me to set my heart right. May my actions and my actions reflect your love and compassion. I shall strive to cleanse my heart from hate and envy and live in a harmony with all people. I shall be close to the Dharma in good as well as in difficult times. I know that should the moment come for me to lead the world, I should do so without fear or regret because I'll leave the world a better person than when I came into it. Okay. Uh, Bo, uh, can you read yes. this one, Bo? <coughs> yeah. Read this. Whatever wrong someone may do to me, may I be compassionate and forgiving and bear no hatred in my heart. I shall bear in mind to be grateful for the acts of love and consideration shown to me. No matter how small they appear to be, for those I love and those who love me. May this life be a blessing and a source of happiness to all things. Namo Buddhaya. Okay. But can you read this one? Go ahead, Bat. Huh? Read this one here. I would like. I would like to share my message. I have gratitude today as well as it the past with the, the, well, may the rejoice and be marriage and keep an eye on me and those love one. I could also like to transfer the merit to my departed relationship related relatives and friends whenever they are may they be free from suffering and be happy wow smart okay good thank you aaron are you ready aaron can you read this one huh no i'm talking aaron hmm. Are you there, Aaron? Hmm. Okay, how about uh, Brandon? Can you explain to them how could we come down here? What did we learn before? Can you explain to them what we learned, remember? Brandon, do you remember or not? No? Johnson, do you remember what we learned last week? Remind them. 
Uh, I don't really remember today. Hmm. Hmm. So here, you see? Okay, uh, beneath this very tree, it has already made so many important discovery in his meditation. That's when he sit down, right? He, when he sat down to do meditation, he, he found a lot, he discovered a lot, right? Yeah, go ahead, Johnson. Next one, Johnson. Uh, slowly? Yeah. Okay. Slowly, Siddhartha sat down in the lotus. He had the river flowing quietly in the distance as soft breezes rustled the gra grasses along its banks. The night forest was tranquil, yet very much alive. Around him chirped a thousand different insects. He turned his awareness to his breath and lightly closed his eyes. The evening star appeared in the sky. What's the power? So it was about Siddhartha sitting in a lotus position and he looked at the river and he saw like the wind like softly rustling the grasses and like every insect around him, heard every insect around him and he turned his awareness to his breath and lightly closed his eyes. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bo, can you cross the leg? Can you cross the leg and the full lotus is tall? Really? Can you show? It's hard. It's hard. Really? Can you show? Hmm. Oh. But can you do I'm, it? Can I'm you sitting in a right? chair. Yeah, you sit in a chair, right? Good. Mm -hmm. How about you, Brandon? Can you can you cross your leg? Easily? Yeah, that's nice. How about, but can you cross your leg? Mm hmm Well, wow, that's nice. Johnson, can you show off? Can you show how you cross your leg to the babies? How? Wait, put your computer on the floor, but and then you can like yeah. show it. Mm. Don't break it. Don't break it. Is uh, it easy? Right? Mm hmm Wow, that's good. All right, good. Thank you. Aaron, are you there? Aaron? So Brandon, you know why? Why we supposed to uh, sit in cross leg? Why is that? Brandon, you know why? Uh, I thought cross leg, not lotus position. That's a lotus position. Johnson, oh, I thought that's lotus position. The two feet is up, not cross like like this. Yeah, the same, the same way. Johnson, oh. you know why? Why is people refer to sit in full lotus? Uh, to cross leg, you know why, Johnson? Probably, probably because it it, it looks similar. Oh. Mm. Megan, can you sit in that cross leg position, Megan? That's what I'm doing right now. Oh really? Is it easy for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is that? What is easy for you? But hard for other people. Why? Well, I'm pretty sure it should be normal to like cross your legs. So I think if you can't, that has something to do with like you. Like, I don't think, I'm pretty sure it's pretty normal for people to be able to cross their legs. So if you can't, I think there's something wrong with you. <laughs> Aaron, are you there, Aaron? Hmm. So one more times, when you when people sit cross leg, when they, they refer to sit cross leg, that's the way they can keep the body still, make sense and strong, make sense and they can sit longer. Understand, Johnson, Brandon? Okay, that's the strongest position. It's like a triangular in three, uh, in three side, right? In three dimension, make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's uh, move on to Brandon. Uh, read next, please, Brandon. Go ahead, My man. brother wants to get his computer charger. Yeah, Brandon, next one. Through mindfulness, Siddhartha's mind, body, and breath were perfectly at one. His practice of mindfulness had enabled him to build great powers of concentration, which he could now use to shine awareness on his mind and body. 
After deeply entering meditation, he began to discern the presence of countless other things in his own body right in the present moment. Organic and inorganic beings, minerals, mosses, and grasses, insects, animals, and people were all within him. He saw that other beings were himself right in the present moment. He saw his own past lives, all his births and deaths. He saw the creation and destruction of thousands of worlds and thousands of uh, stars. He saw all the joys and sorrows of every living being. Those born of mothers, those, those born of eggs, and those born of fission, who divided themselves into new creatures. He saw that every cell of his body contained all of heaven and earth and spanned the three times, past, present, and future. It was the hour of the first watch of the night. Okay, you understand what it's about? Um, so they're talking about how like mindfulness, Siddhartha, like they uh his mind, body, and breath were like were, uh, they synced, right? So they be mm-hmm. like in all mind. And then they talked about how he was uh when he entered deep uh meditation, right? Mm-hmm. He began to uh discern which is like break down like all what like all the things that he was feeling, like all the things in his body. Mm-hmm. So he um the text talks about he starts to like talk about or uh he starts to like uh have mindfulness over like um organic and inorganic beings minerals mosses and grasses stuff mm-hmm. like that all inside him so like uh, the universe inside the body that we were talking about so he starts to recognize and understand like all the stuff in his like human body right mm-hmm. and then he stuff uh on a spiritual level uh other beings of himself like his past lives his deaths and then he started going deeper he saw the creation and destruction of thousands of worlds and thousands of stars so he's really deeply meditating and seeing all these uh what's mm. it called he's seeing like all these uh i forgot the word but he's seeing all this right mm-hmm. and then um and then text talks about uh, he felt all the joys and sorrows of every living being, mm. those others of eggs and those of fission, which is like atoms, mm. and uh, the atoms that divide themselves into new creatures. Mm-hmm. Can you explain to um, Bat and uh, and Bo, right, about uh, what type of mineral, what type of vitamins that you're supposed to have for your um, body to grow? Can you tell them? Uh, back left, but uh, both. So there's a, a lot of minerals and vitamins and like uh, a lot of chemicals in your body that make the body, right? So uh, so the vitamins that you get daily, like going outside, that's vitamin D, right? From the sun. Yeah. Also eating like orange, that's also vitamin D. Uh, drink milk. What did they say, right? Drinking milk makes your bones stronger. You know why? Because milk is strong in calcium, right? Um, let's see. Uh, if you eat, if you uh, if you eat a bunch of fruits, that's other like vitamins, like probably like vitamin A and B, right? Uh, and then you also have a lot of uh, different chemicals, like uh, you also you have iron, right? You have iron in your body. It's in the blood, right? And then yeah. you also a lot of protein that you get from like, well, uh, you would get from like uh, vegetables, right? That's why vegetables are so healthy. And they give you a lot of protein and they give you a lot of uh, healthy minerals. Fiber. Yeah. Hey, Ron, come on. So, um, uh, Bo, uh, you know, when you consume... Uh, yeah, be careful. It's echo. My voice is like. Yeah. That's okay. Can you tell them what type of vitamins that you need to consume every day in order to grow? Cow. Can you turn off your mic? What's that? That's okay. So, what kind of vitamins that you need to consume every day in order to grow? 
cereal. What else? Every day, do you eat cereal? Uh -huh. You eat cereal every day, every morning? No. He doesn't. Really? Okay. How about do you, you drink milk every day? No. No, not really. He doesn't drink. You drink uh, orange? No, no, you don't have orange juice. Really? You drink water. You get to drink water? Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Aaron, we don't have Aaron, can you tell them for their age? Uh, like they are like your brother, what type of my mineral, what type of vitamin they need to consume, you know, to grow uh, Aaron? Need a protein. With what? Fat. Protein, fat, calcium. What um, kind of food that they can, can, can get more protein? Uh, protein, you can eat beans. You can eat um, uh, beans, peanut butter. Um, you can eat... Uh, Johnson knows a lot. Okay, Johnson, someone say that if you are pure restaurants, you don't have enough protein. Is that true? Johnson? I mean, it depends on what you're consuming, of course. Okay. So, uh, Brendan, can you argue with that? If someone say, all right, you, if you don't eat any kind of meat, uh, you would not get enough protein. Is that, is that right or wrong? Uh, that is wrong. That Why? Is wrong. Why? So, uh, vegetarian, it would be slightly easier, right? Because you get to uh, eggs and milk, right? Those are high protein or eggs are high protein, right? They're good for you. But if you're vegan, so no dairy products, right? Nothing from an animal. There are specific plants, specific plants that have are high in protein and high in fiber. So uh, there's actually like a few, like, you know, like bodybuilder, they have to get protein to get bigger, right? There's some vegan uh, bodybuilders and they can, they just eat plants, but the plant has a lot of uh, protein. Mm. Aaron, in your life, have you consumed uncapped meat before? Of course. Really? <laughs> oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, uh, how long, how long have you been staying away from that? No, uh, almost three years, I think. Okay. So you feel weak or you feel stronger? Tell them. Um, I don't remember when I was um, eating. Well, I feel, I feel more, I don't feel as tired all the time though. When I eat meat, I feel like when I go, I feel more like exhausted in a way. Mm. Anyway, okay. So uh, Megan, what do you think Megan? If you eat bean, that's enough for your protein or, or you need to consume some kind of meat? Megan. Uh, I think there's definitely other ways to like consume protein, mm -hmm. like not just meat or not just beans. Mm -hmm. So you could like eat other things that have other source of protein. Okay. How about you both at home? You eat a lot of meat or, or, or what? We do eat meat sometimes. I don't know. Really? Anything wrong with uh, consuming meat? You know, well, anything wrong or there's no more? Wait, what do you mean? So it's normal to consume meat or, or something wrong there? What do you think? It's, it's, it's wrong. But... Really? Why is it wrong to consume meat? Can you tell why? Because we're killing animals. What's that? We're killing animals. Yeah, people kill animals for you to live, right? Mm -hmm. Do they want to die? Mm -mm. They want to sacrifice their life for you or no? Mm -mm. All right, so why you still consume them then? Well, I don't know. You don't know, huh? Okay, Johnson, here, the Buddha say that someone, something, can, can you tell me what kind of beings was born from the wombs, living from the belly? What type of uh, things, what type of um, 
beings that were born from from worms. Uh, what kind of beings that were born from the womb? Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, Ty. You don't know? I don't know. Do Humans? yourself. Do yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So human being, right? Will will we be will we born from the the egg or no? No. No. I mean, I mean, if you think about no, no, we're not born. Right. From that, no. Okay. No. So, Bo, what kind of beings that were born from the eggs? Can you remember, you know? Mm, beings born from eggs? Mm -hmm. Which kind of animal is that? What kind of beings is that? Birds. Birds? What else? Uh, snakes. What's that? Snakes. A snake? What else? Um, turtles. Yes, what else? Uh, um, chicken. Oh, chicken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, John, uh, Aaron, can you explain those born of fission? What's mean? What? What's mean with those born of fission? What's mean? Those born of fission? What's mean here? What's mean in the, in the in the text? Oh, those born of vision. Yeah. Like when they when they like split. Mm -hmm. like Can you tell? Split into two. Can you tell? Or what type of uh things is that? Um, some uh, wait what? What type of animal is that? Um, I know some bacterial cells that do that. Which fusion is probably the, the, the from the earth from uh, from the pie right and who divide themselves to the new crater right okay okay so um, Johnson you know what type of, of beings that was born from one place from one one form into others uh. Aaron, go ahead. Tell him now, Aaron. Like a uh, what? Oh, what like happened? a like a butterfly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, butterfly. Uh huh. From the worms to butterfly, right? This guy smart. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Mm, okay. So there's all kind of beings there, right? In your body, right? Remember. Uh, okay. So um. Uh, Brandon, you still have your grandparents, your your mom's side, your dad's side. They still survive. They still alive. <clears throat> My dad's side. How about your mom's side? Uh, uh, my my uh grandfather, uh, passed away a while ago, and then my grandmother recently passed away, like a few months ago. But they're still inside your body, right? They still inside my body. Is that right? <laughs> I mean, like in my head, yeah. Like if you say that's okay, body. Wow, Bo, he's you, you so smart. Bo, can you explain to him why okay. even his grandparents mm -hmm. pass away, they they still with him. Bo, can explain to him, please. So in your heart, like in your memory, uh -huh. they watch wow. you. Mm -hmm. You see that? Brandon, he's so smart, right? Aaron. Can you explain further more? You, your parents, your grandparents are still are alive, right? In both sides, right, Aaron? Alive. Yeah, in both alive. sides. Oh, um, okay. they're alive in both sides. My grandparents. Um, yes, my my parents. my mom's side, but not my dad's side. Okay. All right, you guys can wait. Okay. Um. Uh. Liva, uh, Chiela, Aero, Dana, just wait for you go down to come, okay? Let me, uh, uh yeah, let me uh, click on so you guys can go there, okay? Mm. Okay. Yeah, wait for you go down, okay? Yeah, go inside there and wait for you go down. How about Megan? Uh, your grandparents on both side, on your mom's side, that side, they still uh, alive, Megan? 
Um, my grandparents on my mom's side pass away, okay. but I have a grandma on my dad's side. Okay. The one that passed away is still live with you. Is that right? Well, I didn't really know them. Really? Because, <laughs> yeah. Like, they were still alive when I was born. But, like, when I went to Vietnam, I was still, like, a baby. So, mm -hmm. I don't, like, remember them. And then when my grandfather passed away, I also didn't really know him. So, like, yeah, I was sad because I never got to, like, really, really know them. But, like, I don't really have any memory. No. But, like, I still wish that. My question is, they still, even they pass away, but they still with you forever? Is that right? Yeah. How? Can you explain how? How they still with you forever? Even they pass away already. How? Because, like, how? I feel like I would be able to explain it better if I had any memory. Because, like, say, like, I did get to spend time with them, then, like, I would like cherish all the memory I have with them. But okay. I guess if my grandma on my dad's side passed away, then I, she would still be with me because she was here like, mm -hmm. like all my life. Okay. Johnson, can you explain? Even, even still, so your grandparents, what side is still alive, right, Johnson? Uh, both of my grandparents, uh, no. On my dad's side, uh, my grand, my grandpa died. Okay, but they still uh, with you forever. Is that right? Yes. How can you explain how? How they still with you forever? <laughs> um, through memory and in my heart. And the one thing, Aaron, keep it come on, please. One thing you got for God, can, uh. I mean that uh, without your grandparents, can you sit here? No. Why not? No. Why because not? your grandparents make your mom mm -hmm. and your dad, whatever side yeah. is on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your parents gave birth to your parents, right? And your parents gave birth to you. So that means you guys still have what? Their gene, right? Their DNA, yeah. right? Yeah. You still have their DNA, is that right, Brandon? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why their DNA is still stay with you forever. Make sense now. Not only in your heart, not only in your, in your memory, but also, but, only, but also in your DNA too. Is that clear now, Johnson? Right, Boo, okay. Megan, you understand now, right? Yeah. Okay, Jada, go to... Uh, Go to the lock uh, to the um, breakout room number one uh, to study with Coach Chang there. You know how to go there? Ask your sister to help out, okay? Ask your sister to help you out. So that's why, that's why it is three periods of time, right? Past, present, future. Like Johnson, can you tell them one more time why your, your grandparents, even they pass away? But their DNA is still with you forever. Why is that? It's because our grandparents gave birth to our mom and our dad. So they gave birth to us and they, we got their DNA. Mm -hmm. Right. Brandon, you smart, right? Can you explain? Can you explain how? How come your grandparents, even they pass away, they still they, they stay with you forever inside your DNA? <clears throat> From genetics. Mm -hmm. And what else? Uh, let's see. Genetics. So... Mm. I don't know. Their DNA is also genetics. That is genetics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, uh, the stuff that some of the stuff that you have on your body, like physically, like maybe like, well, I mean, yeah, obviously this hair. Mm -hmm. I have. Hey, right from dad and mom's side uh i have a uh, nationality right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay uh, cool. can you tell your brother to sit nearby you so you can see him asking uh, nearby you 
He's wearing like a different color shirt, so it blends in with the background. Okay, so take out, take down the uh, the uh, background, the background, then the virtual background, so that can see both of you. Then, so Aaron, oh good, move on. Yeah, move up here. Okay. okay, Sydney by your brother. Sydney by your brother, good. Yeah, Sydney by your brother. Okay, so don't make it blurry, um, but bố. Okay, so um, Johnson from now on, right? So Megan, from now on, you understand why um, your grandparents is still with you forever, right, Megan? Yeah. Why? Why is that? Why your parents, grandparents, or even your great great grandparents still live with you forever? Why is that, Megan? Because without them, you wouldn't be alive, mm -hmm. and you also have their genes. Yeah, the DNA, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next one. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Let's see here. Megan, can you read next, please, Megan? Go ahead, Megan. So Tama entered even more deeply into meditation. He saw how countless words arose and fell were created and destroyed. He saw how countless beings passed through countless births and deaths. He saw that these births and deaths were but outward experience and not true reality, just as millions of waves rise and fall in, I don't know, on the surface of the sea, while the sea itself is beyond birth and death. If the waves understood that they themselves were watered, they would transcend birth and death and arrive at true inner peace, overcoming all fear. This realization enabled Gautama to transcend the net of birth and death. He smiled. His smile was like a flower blossoming in the deep night and radiated a halo of light. It was the smile of a wondrous understanding insight into the destruction of all defilements. He attained this level of understanding by the second watch. Okay, explain what's about. Mm, I, don't, I don't know how to explain this. Yeah, explain bit by bit, step by step. When Gautama was in meditation, he saw, he started to understand um, how beings pass through birth and death. Mm -hmm. And he compare it with like the sea and how there are like million waves and how they like, I don't know. Mm. Okay, Brandon, can you help out? Can you finish the rest? What's about? Brandon, you smart. I'm gonna have to read. Uh, okay. I have to read it real quick. Hmm. Yeah, Johnson and Aaron, keep a camera on, please. Yeah, what's about? Hmm. So he could recognize birth and death, right? He recognized everything is like the wave, right? Um, he recognized the true value, the true reality of life, right? Hmm. Okay. So, uh, um, Johnson, let me ask you one more question. So let's say later on, if you uh, have if you get married, if you have children, and after that, one hundred years from now, you're done with your life. Is that is you, you done forever or are you still here? Johnson? I guess I'll still be here. Why? Because then my kids are still going to be here, so I'm going to be here. Yeah, they still carry on your DNA. Yeah, see that? And you move on to the next life, right? And this is a cycle, makes sense? And to have different body, you have different DNA, but still have the same things, makes sense? Okay, yeah. All right, go ahead, um, uh, Bo. You smart boy, can you read Bo? 
at just a moment, thunder crashed and great bolts of lightning flashed across the sky as if to rip the heaven in two. Black clouds concealed the moon and stars. Rain poured down. The tunnel was soaking wet, but he did not budge. He continued his med. He continued. <coughs> he continued his meditation. Okay, what's about? Uh, it's how he so determined determination, mm -hmm. and how he stood there and continued his meditation. Okay, even even the this is the nineteen, right? Even yeah. uh, the uh, the rain uh, ran out to his body, right? He's yes. Still, he's still in meditation. Can you do that? I mean, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Megan, let's say um, why you walking from uh, from this the school bus to the house. This was raining. Would you still walk in normal way? I have to rush. You have to rush. Have to run away from the rain. Megan. Um, I would walk. What's that? I will walk. You don't run? Even no. if it's in the hall? Yeah, I would really? still walk. Really? Okay, but if you, uh, but come here. So if you walk from the school bus to your house and this rain out there, it's rain heavily, would you rush back to your house or get you can still walk into the house? But I you I usually um bike um, if yeah, I'm more up here. Walk. Yeah, more here. Yeah, more here. I don't have anything over it in my backpack. Really? Okay. About uh, Brandon, would you run or just uh, walk slowly? Even this is uh, it's rain heavily. Brandon. <clears throat> uh, I would walk. So you walk? Yeah, because uh, if it's like from school bus, I could use my backpack as protection. And if I run, then I have possibility of me slip and I fall and then I die. So oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> I walk. Okay. How about you, Johnson? So from school bus, um, to uh, to your house. If it's raining heavily, you run, you rush back, or you just still walk. Uh, I walk. Why? You can get wet. Yeah, but I like the rain. You like the rain? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So the next one. Or I see here. Let's see. Aaron, are you there, Aaron? Okay, uh, Megan, uh, can you summarize this one for me? Okay, Megan, okay. are you ready, Megan? Yeah. Good. During the Buddha's time, there was a lay person named Mita Kantaka who was friends with the king, many influential people, and many great monks. He was friends with the venerable Ananda and was even close to the Buddha himself. After Mita Kantaka gave great amounts of charity, the Buddha established Mita Kantaka and his family in the three refuges. Putang Saranang Gachami, the Buddha is my refuge. Tamang Saranang Gachami, the Dhamma is my refuge. Sankang Saranang Gachami, the Sangha is my refuge. And then for a second time, they took the Buddha, Dhamma, and Sangha as their refuge. And they did it again for the third time. 
The Buddha then established them in the Code of Conduct, the Five Precepts. Banati Bada Vera Mani Sikha Padang Samadhi I will refrain from taking life. Atina Tana Vera Mani Sikha Padang Samadhi I will refrain from all forms of stealing. Kame sumi chachara, vera mani sikha padang samadhiyami. I will refrain from sexual misconduct. Mutsawada, vera mani sikha padang samadhiyami. I will refrain from harmful speech. Surame raya macha pamadatana, vera mani sikha padang samadhiyami. I will refrain from intoxication. After Mita Kantaka gave offerings and was established in the Triple Gem and the Five Precepts, King Pasanati awarded him with a high position and the title of Man of Many Friends. The king then gave him gifts, and so did all of the high officials. After that, the king and all the officials gave gifts to Mita Kantaka's wife. After receiving all these gifts, Mita Kantaka and his wife continued to give alms and donations to the Buddha and his Sangha for seven days. On the seventh day, the Buddha Anumotana, or rejoiced, with the merit made by the couple. He then gave them Adama Desana, or discourse, after which they both became Sotapanas. The monks gathered at the main hall and discussed Mita Kantaka. Mita Kantaka was from a Brahmin family that had lost most of its wealth. Mita Kantaka's parents tried to arrange a marriage with another Brahmin family that had a wise daughter. When they were alone, the wise daughter said, I see your family is poor, but that is not important. What I want to know is, do you have any friends you can rely on? No, my lady, I do not. Then, before you can marry me, you must first go out and make friends and connections. Yes, my lady, who should I start with? Begin with the four gatekeepers of the city. And so, Mita Kantaka went and made friends with the four gatekeepers of the city. The wise girl told him to use his friends as a means to make more friends and to make their connections his connections. As Mita Kantaka followed the wise girl's advice, she saw his potential and agreed to marry him. Eventually, he made friends with many merchants wise men, nobles, generals, and even the Viceroy. Through his friendship with the Viceroy, Mita Kantaka was able to become close with the king. His wise wife also told him to make friends with the Buddha's monks, as they would be able to give good advice and guidance. Eventually, Mita Kantaka became friends with the 80 chief elders. Through his friendship with the elders, Mita Kantaka got a chance to get close to the Venerable Ananda, the chief attendant of the Buddha. And through his friendship with the Venerable Ananda, 
Mita Kantaka was able to get close to the Buddha. All of this was made possible by the constant guidance and good advice of Mita Kantaka's wife. Mita Kantaka was able to increase his wealth, fame, and status by listening to his wise wife and following her advice. What did you? Okay, Megan, what did you learn from this, Megan? What I learned from it? Yeah, summarize, summarize the story, what's about. Okay, so there was someone that was close with the, um, someone friends, someone that was friends with the king. Um, I don't really know how to pronounce his name. Um, he was close to the Buddha and Buddha established him um, with the three refuges and they started chanting and they started chanting about how they would not commit the five precept. And then he was titled man of many friends. Mm -hmm. And he was showered with gifts after that. And he continued to offer gifts to the Buddha mm -hmm. and his Sangha with his wife. And mm -hmm. he, this man was a guy that was once a rich family, but um, they became poor and his family tried to set her him up with a wise woman and she asked him if he had any friends to rely on and he said no and she told him before she would allow him to marry her that he had to make friends and through um, the friendships that he made he was able to meet many people, including the general, the king, the elders, and the Buddha's monks. Mm -hmm. And through his friendship with the elders, he got to be close with the Ananda. And through the Ananda, he became close to the Buddha. Okay, so what's the moral? Uh, friendship is important. Like, mm -hmm. like having friends is important for your everyday life. Can you live without friends? Probably not. <laughs> really? Johnson, can you live without your body? Johnson? I live without my body. Can you live without your body? Uh, probably not, Ty. Really? All right. Aaron, can you live without your body, Aaron? No. Why not? If you take off, if you go to a uh, cordon and stay in the woods for a year, can you handle that? Aaron? Maybe not now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bo, can you live without your brothers? Yeah. Really? Okay. All right, Brandon, can you live without your parents? Can you live without your, um, your body, your friends? Brandon? Are you parents or buddies and friends? Everyone. Anyone? Uh, Everyone, oh. anyone. Can you live without them? Oh, well, I have to interact with people. If I don't interact with people, I'm going to go crazy or something. Really? <laughs> Yeah, you have to. I'm gonna start talking to myself, like, uh, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, Johnson, does that happen to you too? Without talking to anyone, you need to talk to with your by yourself, like crazy people at the mental hospital. Yes, hi. Yes. So, which one do you prefer? You prefer to talk by yourself, or you prefer to talk with your body, or, or your your baby, your sibling? Talk to talk with my body, talk with my siblings. What happened if you can can you handle that for a year without talking to anyone else? No. Really? Really? So Aaron, how long do you think you can stay away from everyone without talking? How long? Um maybe like less than a month. Really? Megan, how long, Megan? Um 
Not very long. How long? One week? One month? One year? I don't think I would last a week. Oh, really? Johnson, how long can you last without talking with other people? Like two days max. Really? <laughs> really? Brandon, how long? Where's the max, uh, Brandon? Uh, probably like a month. And then I slowly go crazy, you know? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bo, how long? How long can you stay by yourself without talking to anyone else? Okay. Anyone? Mm, anyone, without, without, without talking to anyone, whether your parents, your brothers, and your preacher, how long can you stay by yourself without talking to them? Maybe a week. Wow. Okay. Wow, Bo, I so saw Johnson. He, he much better than you, right? What happened? You couldn't survive with two days? How about uh, but <laughs> how long? But how long can you go Three without days. talking? Huh? Three days. Three days? All right. Okay, good. So you see that? Having the action with other people is so important, right? But you need to keep good company, right? Good people with good people, not bad people, right? Okay. So, um, Aaron, I have a story. Please, uh, can you read this one? Okay, Aaron. Go ahead, Aaron. Read this one here. Clip hanger. Go ahead, Aaron. One day, clip hanger. One day while walking through the wilderness, a man stumbled upon a vicious tiger. He ran but soon came to the edge of a high cliff. Desperate to save himself, he climbed down a vine and dangled over the fatal precipice. As he hung there, two mice appeared from a hole in the cliff and began gnawing on the vine. Suddenly, he noticed on the vine a plump wild strawberry. He plucked it and popped it in his mouth. It was incredibly delicious. What's the bow? What's the meaning? Um, like, have you have you heard this story before? No. <laughs> okay, what's about? Um, it's like he's just living in the present moment. Mm. Well, no, no. We'll tell them a story. The whole story. What's about first? Oh, so a man was uh was walking through the wilderness, and then a tiger was there. So he ran to like, cause like you know you don't want to be. Like you're scared, so you run, and then he gets to the cliff, the uh, edge of a cliff. So he doesn't. So then he goes down the cliff, so he can continue running. But instead, when he uh, when he was there, um, two mice uh, came out from the, a hole in the cliff and just started um, biting on it. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, and then he just looked up, and then he saw a strawberry, and then he took it and ate it. Would you, if you were him, would you enjoy the strawberry? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so um, Aaron, you smart. Can you explain to them what the, where is the metaphor about the um the tigers? Where the what's the, the metaphor about the the two mice? And what the, the uh, metaphor about the strawberry? Can you explain? It's like <clears throat> it's like everything happens in. Like so much things are happening in life, but then at the same time, you still and you're like there's still things that you enjoy. Like yeah. you're no no explain first. What's the mice represent? The mice represents two like, mice. It represents like people um to uh trying to chew you uh like uh take away your support. Okay. Okay, Johnson, you got the uh, metaphor here. What's the tiger represent? What the mice represent? What the strawberry represent? You understand, Johnson? Uh, I wasn't, uh, I don't know that. Okay, Brandon, you smart. You understand what's the, what they are represent about? The tigers, the two mice, a divine, and the strawberry. On the cliff, what was represent? What uh, what is represented like about the, the story? Like, what's the most important thing in the story? Mm -hmm. Like that. Oh, no. 
no, I'm talking about the, this, the, the cutters here, the tigers. Yeah, represent what? The tiger represent a, like a, a bad event or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. like, How about the, the edge of the high cliff represent what? Edge of the high cliff. Uh, high cliff represent what? Well, I think it's like an end to something. Like okay. maybe five or like end to like a okay. stuff. Oh, How about the... um. How about the vine? The vine, this is the, 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 the tree, right? He hold on, right? Well, yeah. Then what? Uh, oh, that one's hard. Oh, uh, Megan, how about uh, the, the two mice? What do they uh, represent about? Megan, you follow? The two mice? Um, All right, let me... Let me explain to you guys, okay? Now that the tigers represent what? Okay, but and but and but okay, and the cliff represent the death. You understand that? Okay, and the vice that means your your life source, right? You hold on. And the mice that means two mice represent the day and night. The two mice bite your life source every day. You understand that? And strawberries. Is that, 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 that represent what? What the uh, Aaron, you got the point now. What do you, re uh, how about story? What represent now? Um, like the little, the little, the ups, the little yummies. Yeah. And the, uh, what, what about, <laughs> what, what, how about the story represent what? It's like, um, even though like your life, you're facing so much problems, the strawberry is like the good, mm -hmm. like you're still enjoying, you're still enjoy. Is there any problem with that? Why you hold on on the vow when you hold on the food <laughs> and then you still enjoy your strawberry? What's the problem then? It's like you're you're always living on edge. Mm -hmm. So, so Bo, you understand the story? You understand the metaphor, Bo? You yes. smart, right? What do you understand about? Tell me. Uh, the, um, like, what do you mean? What do I understand? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Johnson, do you understand the whole metaphor of this story now? Yeah, I kind of understand now. Yeah, explain one more time. Go ahead. What's it about? Basically, it's about like, even, even though like you're in like tough situations or moments in your life, you can always find something to enjoy. That's one important thing, right? Aaron. You understand the negative side of that this story? What's what's the negative side of this story, uh, Aaron? What's because you're all you're always yeah. hanging on. And a what? And like every and every you're hanging on every day. You slowly chip. That's your like your life is slowly chipping as you hang on. How about the story? What story represent? The strawberry. Mm -hmm. Represents. Yeah, like it represents the uh, the fun, the moment, fun moment, the enjoyable moments. But your your life, your life spot <laughs> will be your life spot is what? Slowly getting cut away. Mm -hmm. So what's what's the metaphor? What's the meaning? What's the moral? It's like um, well, it's saying like you're living, uh, like you're living. And in the inevitable, like life, like an inevitable end, mm -hmm. but you're still enjoying, like you're still living to, to 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 enjoy. You still something. get you get stuck with temptation of the story, right? You know, yes. the night will the mice of the day and night by you every day, right? But you still stuck with your temptation. Is that right? With your strawberry, can you just climb up? If you go, the tiger will eat you up. Then where do you go? That's all for your life. You hang <laughs> on. You hang on to the mice get by the roots. And when it's done, you, you fall down to, to the, the cliff, to the bottom of the cliff. That's all. But you still enjoy. You do this, still enjoy the story. <laughs> you, don't, you don't try to find some way to rescue yourself, right? You, but you still yes. hang on this, the, 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 the vine and the root, and you still enjoy the strawberry. Yes. Yeah. So uh, Johnson, you follow Johnson? If you 
if you were in that situation, would you still enjoy the story, or, or you have to find some way to uh, to get away from from that clip? Uh, uh, I'm gonna just enjoy enjoy the strawberry side. Really? Hmm. How about you, yeah, Megan? Really, uh, Megan, if you were a that man, would you still enjoy uh, the story? I have to find some way to get out of that situation, Megan. I think I would just enjoy. <laughs> and what happened? You enjoy, and one day, right? You done with your life, right? Yes. Okay. Brandon, what do you do? What should you do? Enjoy the story or find some way to get out of that situation? Uh, what do you do? How to get out first? Yeah, how? How could you get out? Oh, out of that story? Mm -hmm. like if you were that man, would you enjoy the story or you find some ways to get out? I'm a, I'm a take the strawberry. I put it in my pocket, and then <laughs> I'm a, I'm a going to escape. I escape, and then I eat the strawberry. Okay. So it's smart. Yeah. Okay. How about you, uh, Bo? Would you enjoy the strawberry while you hang on the the root, the roots, and you may fall later on, or, or, or what will you do? We have all uh, three of them. Wait, wait, wait. There's there's three strawberries in the picture. So I'll take all three of them. I it. Really? Aaron, what should you do, Aaron? You still hang on the story? You still hang on the temptation? Or you no. have to find some way out? I have to find some way out. Really? Uh, yes. Uh, okay, Johnson, what do you say, Johnson? Yeah, I actually changed my mind, so I'm going to find some way out. Oh, you know, I'm about to die. Yeah, I'm about to take that shit. You have to find some way out, otherwise you die. You fall out and yeah, you I'm die. Gonna, I'm gonna throw it at the mice so they get distracted, <laughs> and then I'm gonna my ungodly superhuman upper body strength to pull up on that uh, branch and get up. That's remember, how it's gonna happen. Remember, you cannot chase away day and night. Remember that, right? Mm hmm You cannot chase away the day and night. It's come there, all right? It come to get you day and night, right? That's impermanent. All right, let's finish up then, all right? So Megan, you say that you enjoy the story, right? And let the mind up there at night to, to buy your, your way out until you found out, right, Megan? I think I agree with Brendan. I think I'm going to put the strawberry in my pocket and then find a way out and oh, then wow. eat the strawberry. Okay. All right, that's, 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 uh, that's nice. All right, go ahead, Megan. Number one, please, Megan. Everyone palm together. Go ahead, Megan. No, thank you. Really? Okay, uh, yeah. Brandon, please. Number one, Brandon. <clears throat> to, to the Buddha, I return and rely. Now in a whole living being, understand the great faith. Profoundly <clears throat> and bring forth the body mind. Okay, Johnson, number two, please. To, to the Dharma, I return and rely, vowing that all living beings deeply enter the Sutra treasury. And have wisdom like the sea. Okay, Aaron, please, the last one. To, to the Sangha I return and rely, vowing that all living beings born together a great assembly. One and all in harmony. Okay, Megan, may I please, Megan? May I get good grades? May, may I get good grades? May I? May I be grateful? May, may I be grateful? And may I be able to eat strawberry? May I be able to eat strawberry. All right. Well, 
um, Brandon, my parents, please, Brandon. <coughs> May our parents live long. May our parents live long. May our parents be healthy. May our parents be healthy. May our parents be understanding. May our parents be understanding. Okay, Aaron, may we can please? Um, may our weekend be enjoyable. May our weekend can be enjoyable. May our weekend be um safe. Yeah, we can be safe. And may our weekend be spooky. And may our weekend be spooky. All right, good. Thank you. See you then. Okay, I get a Remember the story. Okay.